Uh, so it's the new year and you've set this year as the one that you're going to learn to code and land that first software developer job. But I imagine you may have some questions like what programming languages should I learn or how many hours per week should I spend learning or should I build a portfolio? What even is a portfolio or when do I know when I'm ready to start applying for jobs? In this video, I'm going to answer all those questions and more so that you make this year the year that you learn to code, change careers and land that first job. So when you're learning to code, the very first question that you have to answer is what direction are you heading in? If you just say you want to be a programmer or a software developer, it's not specific enough. Do you want to be a video game developer, a mobile developer, a desktop developer? Do you want to be a web developer, which there's even subcategories of that, like a front end, back end, full stack developer. You have to pick something more specific because the more specific you get, the easier it will be to create a game plan that's going to lead you to a job. If you don't pick a path, you'll wander around aimlessly and you'll waste a ton of time. I've seen that quite a bit. Now, don't fret about making this decision. Just pick a decision that makes sense for you. If you want my recommendation, what I recommend is specifically getting in the web developer path, really, and even the subcategory of a full stack software developer path. I think that provides the most opportunities. You have a lot of different things that you can go after, but also I have a mentorship program and I work with a lot of my clients who become full stack developers. I see a lot of success in that right now. So that leads us into the next question that you have to answer, which is which programming languages should you learn? As you can see here, there are literally more programming languages than Baskin Robbins flavors. So you have to choose wisely on this. But the good news is that once you pick a path, Picking a programming language just gets a lot easier because you use a smaller subset of languages. As an example, if you want to be a mobile developer, you have a narrower options to choose from. Like for example, instead of all the programming languages on that list, you can choose from Kotlin or Swift or amongst a few others. Now, if you're going with my recommendation of becoming a full stack developer, what I recommend for you is starting off with JavaScript with a small sprinkle of HTML and CSS. The reason I like recommending JavaScript is because it's super easy to get up and running for a new programmer. All you literally need is a computer, a web browser and a text editor, and you can start building small websites with JavaScript. The other reason I think JavaScript is such a great language to learn is there's no shortage of positions for JavaScript developers. JavaScript is literally the programming language of the internet. So most sites that you go to will run JavaScript. There's so much need for it. And you can be not only a front end developer, you can be a back end, a full stack, a mobile, a desktop developer, all these options are available. And if you pick a random programming language like Dart or Scala, which are great programming languages, there's just not as much positions that are open to you. The next step from here that will make or break your journey as a self taught software developer is actually a very simple and easy step. And that step is to just scroll down the page a tiny, tiny bit, you see that little red button that says subscribe there, just go ahead and click on that. I've heard that nine out of 10 people who click on that will actually become software developers. Okay. So now that you've picked the path, you have picked a programming language. Where do you go from here? The next thing that you have to do is stop thinking about things, pondering, philosophizing. You have to get started. Now the key to getting started is to keep things simple. So a big mistake that I see a lot of people make is they will go and buy a whole library of books on Amazon about JavaScript or whatever programming language, or they go on Udemy and buy every course up that they can that's on sale. This is not the way to go for your first month. That first month, all you want to do is pick either one Udemy course that's highly rated, high quality, or you're going to pick one book that is again, high quality. If you want a book recommendation, I recommend the head first JavaScript book. That's how I learn it. That's what I recommend to a lot of my clients who are learning JavaScript. It doesn't teach everything, but it teaches you the basics. Now, the idea of that first month, again, you're not going to learn everything. All you're trying to learn are the bare necessities to be able to write software on your own. So things like control flow statements, data types, and how to think programmatically amongst a few other things are the key. And that's really what you want to focus on for that first month. This leads us to the next question, which is how many hours per week should you spend learning? To me, the minimum that you should be doing per week is 15 hours, 15 hours, which comes out to, you know, at something like two hours per day, that is a good bare minimum, but you really want to get closer to 20 or 25 or even 30 hours per week. The more the merrier, obviously. So after you spend at least one month on that single Udemy course or that single book, the next thing that you want to have on your game plan is actually building projects that will later go into your portfolio. And there are two main reasons that you want to build an assortment of projects, AKA a portfolio. The reason number one is that knowledge of programming concepts does not make you a programmer. What makes you a programmer is taking the concepts that you've learned that are programming concepts 
and actually writing software with that. You're gonna end up writing so much code building out these projects, that's where you're gonna build those real skills that you're gonna use later on in a job. The one important thing that I want you to keep in mind is when you start building projects is where things get hard. It's very easy to follow a Udemy course or a book, but when you actually have to start building projects is where things are gonna slow down and it's gonna feel like a real grind. So just kind of know that that's coming, but that's where you'll make the most progress where you're actually building out your own projects and applying what you're learning. And of course, the second reason that you wanna build a portfolio is because you wanna show off your chops to a potential employer. Meaning that when you show up to a job interview, you actually have something to show that says, I'm a programmer, here's proof that I know how to write code. Now this inevitably leads to the next question, which is which projects should I build, right? Which are the ones that will get me a job? Most people will overthink this. This is really tough. And I see a lot of people overthinking this, making this very complex. My simple recommendation is to build a total of seven projects, at least seven projects. You can do a little bit more if you want. And I would recommend building three simple projects, three intermediate projects, and one like capstone project, the most complex projects that you can make. So for example, you kind of want to think first, like where you want to get to, right? So the a capstone project would be something like if you're getting into full stack development, a project that has a front and a back end, kind of like a chat application, maybe it has a database and an API. It's very, very complicated, lots of moving parts. That's where you eventually want to get to. And so you work your way backwards. Maybe you want to do three intermediate projects. Something intermediate could be like a calculator app. And then maybe you'll have three simple projects, something like maybe a, a to-do app, a clock app. Those could be something that you start with. Now, if you want more information about this, I've created a whole video that I will link to right here, I think. Uh, click on that video. That really goes in depth on those three types of projects, and it breaks that down even more with examples that you can use. Before I go on to the last and most important part of your game plan, I just briefly want to mention that I do have a mentorship program that you may or may not be interested in. I've helped dozens of my previous clients land a job job as a software developer. And I've done that through really developing a game plan for them in addition to giving them support and guidance along in their journey. If you're interested in joining the program, you will have to book an assessment call with me where I just really want to figure out like where you're currently at with things, what are your goals? And if mentorship's a good fit, I will definitely break it down and definitely break down what the investment looks like as well on that call. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can book that free call. Really the last question that you have to figure out how to answer effectively is when do I start applying for jobs? And my simple answer to this is way before you feel ready. So you're gonna be surprised when you go through and you finish those seven projects, when you get done with it, you won't feel ready. In fact, you're gonna feel like quite the imposter. This is pretty normal. Because you feel like an imposter, you're gonna tell yourself, oh, I just need another month, I need another three months or six months, but honestly, this is nonsense. It's better to pick a specific goal or a specific outcome as a sign that you are ready to start applying, which I think seven projects is pretty good. Now, you may go out there, you start applying for a few jobs and you get a lot of feedback that you're not quite ready, Good, use that feedback. So maybe there's a specific skill you need to refine and get better. And then in a month or two months or three months, you go back out there and start applying. Or maybe you start applying for jobs, you get a job offer and boom, congrats, you are now a software developer. Well, if you've made this far in the video, I would love to hear about where you're currently at. So go ahead and drop a comment below. Please let me know, like, have you started? Are you gonna get started today? So I can use this to make future videos. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and peace out.